Thank you, Christina. That is a rousing way to begin our worship time together. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to worship in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether you are a longtime member, a, uh, someone who's come back to visit for, a, uh, for today, or whether you are a first time guest with us this morning, we welcome you. And if you're worshiping at home, we welcome you as well. Um, it is good to be together in the house of God. It is good to be together to sing our praises and hail the power of Jesus' name. So a mission moment that needs to be lifted up for the good of the congregation and the good of our community. Um, as you may remember from previous announcements and from the e-messenger, we were asked to become a lighthouse congregation by the Baltimore Washington Annual Conference. And our council approved um, us becoming a lighthouse congregation and we received final approval from the conference this week. So our status as a lighthouse congregation is firm and approved. So for those who may not remember what we're talking about, there are several congregations who have disaffiliated or are in the process of disaffiliating from the United Methodist Church, particularly because of the denomination's stance and practices on human sexuality. And these disaffiliations are, um, were approved, or a process for disaffiliating was approved by the Special General Conference in 2019. There's a sunset on that time at the end of this calendar year. So, Lighthouse congregations are congregations who will offer safe haven for members of churches that have disaffiliated, but they themselves, those particular members and families, want to stay United Methodist. And so we will provide a safe haven for those men, women, children, families, others. Um, and Fair Haven will offer opportunities for those members to worship with us, to be in ministry with us without the pressure to join us officially. Um, if they choose to join us down the road, praise God. If they choose to go to a different congregation, praise God. If they choose to go to a different denomination, praise God. And my pack here, I think, is causing troubles. Anyway, um, pastoral care. We will also be offering pastoral care to um, folks who come, along with the possibility for small group discussions um, as they desire, so that, they, so that folks who are in that position can make a new beginning in their faith or in their ministries. We have a couple who have agreed to convene and lead a group as, as that becomes necessary. We will also keep everyone informed about the Baltimore-Washington Conference and our denominational opportunities to grow and to learn and what, what is coming next. So we tell you this because we all have a part in the process. Um, we all need to be aware of those guests who are in worship. And if someone is here because of our status as a lighthouse congregation, we need to remember that they may be in deep grief for losing their spiritual home. And um, they might even be questioning their faith. If the church is falling apart, where's God in all of this? And so we need to take care and be aware of that and um, offer compassionate conversation and empathetic listening and just a warm welcome in the name of Christ. That's something that we're pretty good at, I think, and we can just continue being ourselves. One thing, we don't know how many are going to walk through that door from a disaffiliating congregation. We know that there are, we'll be voting on 22 congregations at annual conference um, this year. That's out of about 700 or so in the conference. Um, only one or two are in this geographic area. Um, so we don't know whether we'll have a whole group of people, whether we'll have nobody, um, but whether folks come through that door and they want to stay with us for a season or make this our, their spiritual permanent home, we welcome them. Um, all of the pastors who will be covering for my sabbatical leave um, have been informed of our status. They're all supportive. 
but they're going to need help in directing people toward them because they're not going to know who's, who's a guest and who's not. So please help them out. Help me out too, for that matter, because um, I'm, still, I'm still learning everybody. <laughs> um, and then finally, we're not going to take time for a dialogue now, but if you have questions or comments or want to talk this, this through some more, you can speak with me, um, or I think uh, Jeff Kaiser, as, as chair of COPA, would be, would be glad to speak with you as well. Um, and I, I assume Deacon Megan would as well. So please contact us if, uh, that, if you would like to talk further. And with that, I would invite you to stand for the call to worship. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God who loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome. The great King over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us. And nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us. The pride of Jacob whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. prayer of the day. Can we pray in one voice? 
everlasting God, your eternal Christ, one dwelt on earth, confined by time and space, give us faith to discern in every time and place the presence among us of him who is head over all things. By your spirit, give us the courage and strength to witness to his life, ministry, death, and resurrection. In the name of our ascended Lord, Jesus Christ, amen. Holy and gracious God, thank you for your claim upon us as your people. Touch us with your love and your grace and help us to go forward in our lives, always witnessing to the grace we have known in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from Luke 24. Verses 44 to 53, would you please stand? Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sin is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my father promised, so stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you. Any kids? Come on. Thank you, Jonathan. And it's good to see you all today. So today we have the privilege of welcoming the Mooney family into our congregation officially. Um, And unfortunately, though, Margaret is homesick um, and Lauren is with her. But they have joined us online. There they are. Good morning. (laughs) And Shell and Shelton are here among us. I'm going to invite Deacon Megan to come come and join me, too. And so I I only have one question for you that I need to ask, because they're coming by transfer from Epworth United Methodist Church in Gaithersburg. Um, So there is only one question to ask. And I barely need to ask it, because we have seen this question lived out in your life in as you've been among us over the last year, but I officially do need to ask you this. So as members of Fairhaven United Methodist Church, will you faithfully participate in our ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? And if you will, please answer, I will. I will. I will. And I'll assume that Lauren answered at home. (laughs) Try it again, Lauren. That was my fault. (laughs) We will. We will. (laughs) Amen. And so, members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. 
Together, will you respond with me as printed in your bulletins and on the screen? We give thanks for all that God has given and welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation, Fairhaven United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. So officially, welcome. Those are membership certificates for, for you and Lauren, and we look forward to um, having you in confirmation class in a year or two or so, um, and, and where you get your own membership certificate. <laughs> welcome. And w welcome to you, Lauren. Welcome to you, Lauren. <laughs> Lauren and Margaret at home, welcome. It is good to have you among us officially. Holy and gracious God, you have called us together to be the church in this time and place. You have placed a story in our lives and a message upon our hearts, and we are witnesses of that love and that grace that you have placed within us. So gracious God, as we spend a few moments contemplating what it means to be a witness for Christ, let your spirit speak deeply to our minds, our hearts, and our lives so that when we go forth from this place, we might put your teachings into practice. In Christ's holy name, amen. Witnesses of these things. You are witnesses of these things, Jesus tells his disciples. 
And this is happening on the day of the resurrection where, and after the walk to Emmaus, the disciples have come back and said, we've seen the Lord. And then Jesus appears in their midst and he opens their minds to the scriptures and he teaches them all of that, all that they've been doing, they're going to continue doing. They're witnesses of all the things that Jesus has done and taught them in their lives. 21 centuries later or so, here we are. We have the same message. We too are witnesses of these things. A witness is someone who has information that other people need to know. You think people need to know about the love and grace of God through Jesus Christ? I think, we, I think they do. So there are expert witnesses, those who have studied and, and researched and have some kind of knowledge and expertise to share, to bring to the table. And there are the eyewitnesses, those who heard and saw firsthand the things that have happened, and they need to tell people about the experiences that they've had. How do we bring those things to our witness for Christ? Most often we associate witnesses and witnessing with a court of law. Witnesses are called to testify on one side or the other um, to share what they know and what they've experienced. So I asked a lawyer friend of mine what he looks for in witnesses and how he chooses his witness to testify. And he said, in choosing a witness, I focus on three things in order of priority. One, the extent of knowledge of the event to which he or she will be testifying. Extent of knowledge. The second thing is the ability to communicate that knowledge in a compelling, entertaining, non-boring way. That's important in a case of, in a study in, the, in a law, it's important here in the church too. Non-boring way, communicating what we know. And third, the lack of bad tangential facts that could hurt their credibility. So embarrassing emails, you know, discipline in the workplace, things like that. The extent of knowledge, the ability to communicate, and no negative facts about us. Seems to me those are pretty good criteria for a Christian witness too. Knowledge of the event. Christian witnesses have knowledge of Christ. Of course, no one had greater knowledge of Jesus than the disciples. I mean, they lived with him and walked with him and learned from him for three years plus. Imagine what they saw and learned firsthand. Can you imagine being there, sitting on the mount as, as Jesus offered his sermon or any teaching? Can you imagine what it was like to see a man lowered down through the roof and Jesus pronounce healing and forgiveness? Can you imagine what it was like to see the crowd gathered before and Jesus would break the bread and share the fish and feed 5,000 people? Can you imagine what it was like to be walking along in a, a funeral procession for, in Nain and to have him reach out and touch the body of the woman's son and have him get up. Or to be at the tomb of Lazarus and for him to call out, Lazarus, come out! And then to be told to unbind him. Can you imagine seeing those things and witnessing those things? And that's just a little bit of what Jesus did, right? They saw amazing and powerful and life-changing things. And they had their own shortcomings forgiven. They knew of Jesus' suffering, death, and resurrection. And then they met him alive again and walk, continued walking and learning from him for the next 50 days. And before he ascended to be with God, Jesus told them, you are my witnesses. In other words, go tell people what you've experienced. And as the apostles told these stories, people listened attentively because they had the ring of authenticity. So like the disciples, 
we are witnesses of these things, for we are the 21st century disciples. Now, obviously, we weren't there to see and experience Jesus' first miracles or to hear his teaching directly from his lips. But we've got the stories of Scripture, right? And we can witness to those stories. And we've got the witness of Christian history and how many years of Christian experience to tell the world about. And we've got our own lives. How has Jesus touched our lives? How have we known the forgiveness of Christ and how has it changed our lives? Where have we seen the power of God in the world, whether through healing or through discerning a, a new pathway forward or new life for a congregation or a new life for ourselves, where we thought it was all done, we were done, and God somehow breathed a new breath of life into us, and our dry spiritual bones were raised up, and now we can witness to these things. We have knowledge of Christ because we've, we know it through the scriptures and through the traditions, and because we've experienced the Spirit in our lives and the presence of Christ in this body, Fair Haven. Second thing is to have the ability to communicate the good news. Christian witnesses share what we know in a compelling, non-boring way. You know, we don't have to entertain um, when we tell our, the story of Jesus. But we can communicate, need to communicate authentically. We can acknowledge the fact that, hey, you know, I don't, got, I don't have all the answers. You know, people, we don't have to debate or even know the finer points of Christian theological thinking. Because people probably aren't going to ask us for, to explain five theories of the atonement. What they want to know is how has Christ changed your life? Why is it important to follow this teacher, this savior, this Lord? We can share authentically about our faith and be honest about where we are on this journey. Christians aren't perfect, and we don't have it all figured out. And if any of you do, I, I want to have a conversation with you because you should probably be standing here instead of me. But we don't have it all together. And we all continue to fall short of God's glory. We probably, if we're honest with ourselves, we have those moments of doubt. But even in that doubt, we live in the hope and faith that God is active in the world and among us and empowering everything we do or say. An authentic faith isn't that get in your face evangelism. Are you saved? Do you know where you're going to spend eternity smoking or non smoking? But an authentic faith is to live out this faith honestly and to be able to share it um, with some sense of empathy and vulnerability. There was a Civil War chaplain who approached a wounded soldier on the battlefield, and he, he asked that soldier, would you like to hear a few verses from the Bible? And the wounded man said, uh, no, I, I'm, I'm thirsty. I'd rather have a little water. And so the chaplain got a canteen and got him a drink. Then he repeated his question, would you like to hear some verses from the scripture? No, sir. I, I, could you put something under my head? And the chaplain rolled up a piece of cloth and wrapped it under, put it under his head, and asked his question again. And the soldier said, no, I, I, I'm, I'm cold. Could you cover me up? And the chaplain took off his coat, wrapped the soldier up as best he could, he was afraid to ask his question again, and he started to walk away. And the soldier called out. He said, look, chaplain, if there's anything in that book of yours that will make a person do what you just did for me, 
then I need to hear about it. Would you read me some scriptures? To live our faith with authenticity is to witness to the things of Christ in a compelling, life-giving way. So Christian witnesses have knowledge, the ability to communicate, and hopefully nothing to hurt our credibility. But let's be honest. We've all got something. We've all got some fact in our past which might hurt our Christian credibility. It's simply the nature of being human. And I think that goes back to being honest about our faith. It's part of that authentic communication. Christians aren't perfect. We're just forgiven. However, there are too many times where we, royal we, will say one thing and do something completely opposite. There are too many nominally or non-religious folks who are sure that all Christians are hypocrites, or at least the vast majority of us. So how we live our lives really does make all the difference. If we teach people about compassion and speak about compassion, people need to see us acting in compassionate ways. If we're talking about loving our neighbor and even loving our enemies, people need to be able to witness that in what we say and do. We need to be welcoming and loving to all people. If we're sharing about how we are forgiven and how God forgives, I would hope that people can experience us as people who forgive, who accept forgiveness, and offer it. If we expect people to live moral and ethical lives, we hope that people can see us striving to do our best. And when we fall short, to accept that we've done wrong and work to repent and change the direction of our lives. And when we share about Jesus welcoming all people into his midst, I pray that people find a welcoming spirit in us as individuals and as a congregation. See, when we talk about those things and live in that way, it is our integrity and our character which enhances our credibility. It is said that um, Gandhi studied in London for a time, and while he was there, he learned and was taught uh, the Sermon on the Mount. And while he was, once he learned that, he said that Christianity is the most complete religion in the world. And a year later, he was living with a Christian family in East India, and he changed his mind. Because too often, he said, I heard one thing proclaimed, and I watched the opposite behavior. Every action, every word, every attitude impacts our credibility as a witness for Christ, either in a positive way or a negative way. So as Christian witnesses, we have experiences and, knowledges, and knowledge of Jesus we authentically communicate what we know through our words and our lives of integrity and good character. One of our United Methodist bishops tells the story from when she was a pastor. And she tells a story about nine-year-old Erica, who is probably now oh, 35 or so. Um, but nine-year-old Erica was, uh, was filled with joy at knowing Jesus, and she wanted all of her friends to know about Jesus. So she said, Pastor, will you come with me and visit my neighborhood? I want to go out and publicize our vacation Bible school. And so the pastor went and thought, oh, this will be easy. We've got some printed flyers. We'll hand out these flyers, and we'll invite people to vacation Bible school. Erica had a different idea. Erica went up to each and every door in the neighborhood and knocked on the door, at least with the ones where she knew that there were kids. She knocked on the door, 
And when people came to the door, she would say, we have a message of Jesus' love to share with you, and my pastor will tell you all about it. <laughs> the bishop said, I was really surprised. But Erica was right. Our first job is to spread the word of the risen Christ. She said, we worked hard that day. And Erica made sure each and every kid in that neighborhood heard the message, Jesus loves you. Now, friends, you don't need to take me uh, on a tour of your neighborhoods to knock on the doors to tell the story and love of Jesus. I'm happy to do that with you. I will do that with you in September. <laughs> but you can share your experiences. You have knowledge of the love of Jesus. You may share your experiences and your knowledge in an authentic way. And if you live your life with integrity and with strength following in the footsteps of Christ, you'll be a good witness for Christ. We are witnesses of Jesus Christ. And you know, Christ is counting on us. Amen. Right, seeing and hearing none others, will you please join me together as we pray? Mighty God, we first and foremost give you praise. That is why we are here on this day to praise and to worship your greatness, your power, your might, your presence, and your faithfulness, God. We give thanks for this place of Fair Haven that welcomes both new members and others who are seeking a place of safe haven. May we continue to tr show true hospitality, Christian hospitality, in the truest sense of the word to open our arms to all who walk through our doors. We give you thanks, God, for your disciples who were witnesses that have passed along the story generation from generation to generation to generation. That at some point in our lives, we were the recipients of those witnesses to the point that ourselves became witnesses. That we too accepted your love and your mercy and your grace. We give thanks for those who are in our midst have had the courage to speak that witness in their writing, in their speaking, in their interactions with neighbors, through the ministries that they engage in, in their jobs, their vocations, their professions, and every multitude of way that you are moving your disciples, us, your disciples to continue to witness to your love and your grace and your mercy today. God, we give you thanks for marriage, for this holy gift, this amazing gift that reminds us of the love of relationship, the hard, hard work of faithful relationship with one another. And we recognize and celebrate those who have had milestones this week and on this day. That their love and their marriage and their relationship with one another is too a reflection of your love manifest in this world. God, there are many that we have named both aloud and many who go unnamed today as well that are in need of healing and intervention. We give you thanks for the wisdom of science, 
of professionals who have dedicated their lives to the healing work of health and wellness. We lift to you the little ones, those who are so vulnerable and weak and innocent and need of advocates to stand in their place. And we just ask for strength for them as they endure long and grueling medical processes for their parents and their caregivers that they may themselves experience a resurgence of endurance and courage to face the difficult path that is ahead of them. God, just intervene in their lives. Make your healing power known in their lives that they too may witness to your greatness and to your power. We lift up those who are in nursing homes, those who may be experiencing some loneliness and need of visits and continue themselves to go in and out of surgeries and hospitals and care centers, seeking both wellness and stability in what is, for many, ongoing and chronic ailments. Give them, too, the strength and the courage to endure and persevere. Lord, we lift up those who are severely ill, in and out of coma, with questions about what is next and what may be possible. And God, we know that all things are possible through you. We don't know how, we don't know why, but we do know and trust in your mightiness and in your power. God, we pray for your intervention. God, we celebrate birthdays, an another year, another trip around the sun, and we look forward to the hope of what the next year brings. We thank you for the celebrations that have happened that remind us of the joy and the difficulty that the year has brought and the ability to face the next year ahead. God, we pray for healing of sore ears and jaws and muscles that ache and bones that are sore. We give you joy and praise for those places where we have seen healing and witnessed healing in the lives of others. For little ones whose fevers have gone away, who have made it through surgeries, for those whose pains have been relieved, God, we lift up those joys to you as well. God, we know that there are many things that have been unspoken in this space today. We lift our entire lives to you. We fall on our knees in this space today, offering ourselves as living sacrifices. God, that as we are here today to be encouraged and supported by one another, that we are fortified to go out and be witnesses to you. We do witness to you, Lord, and we, te we learn from your teachings. We learn from your son's example on this earth in the way that he showed compassion, in the way that he praised your name and faithfully followed you wherever you guided him to go. And now as we close together in our time of prayer, we also model the way that he taught us to pray as we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
one of the weaknesses of our lives is to make a sacrifice of ourselves and to give fully for the love and grace of God. Um, we also receive financial gifts so that the ministry that uh, is done here for Christ through Fairhaven can continue. So please continue to give generously.
Let us join our hearts and voices together in prayer. Endless source of life, pour your blessing upon the gifts we bring before you. Bless our giving in your abundance for the restoration of all people. Through our offering, may those who are weary be energized and those who feel forgotten find a home. With the joy of your grace filling our hearts, we pray. Amen. As we go forth from this space to be witnesses for Christ, know that we don't go alone. If we wonder what words need to be said, if we wonder whether we just need to sit in silence, be prompted by the voice of the Spirit speaking deep to your mind and to your heart. For Christ is already in the world, so let us go and meet him and proclaim his love to all whom we meet. Amen. <laughs> 